The all new GNOME 43 is out and it's a major release that's bringing stunning design revamps, a host of new features and improvements and GNOME 43 also completes the generational leap that started with GNOME 40. While the new status menu with these trendy quick toggles and these stunning new dynamic wallpapers may be the show stealers of this new update, there are many impressive new features packed here. A set of new default apps with huge improvements, a boosted web experience with extensions and web app support, a sleek new calendar and many more upgrades make GNOME 43 an exciting release. We also need to talk about the new GNOME telemetry data collection which caused quite a ruckus in the community. Then there's the new device security report feature which I personally have mixed thoughts about. Yep, there's a lot to this new update. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Starting off with the biggest change, GNOME 43 brings a completely redesigned status menu with brand new quick toggles that let us change frequently used settings with a single click. Things like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and Nightlight can be turned on or off with just one click now. Thinking about it, earlier we'd need two or more clicks to do the same thing. GNOME Desktop has had the same old status menu since the release of GNOME 3 which was more than a decade ago. I'll be honest here, when I first saw these new quick toggles, I wasn't the happiest person in the world as I had gotten very used to the older status menu. But once I used these new quick toggles for a week, I think these are way better. They are simple, easy to use and they look great. And additional options for any of these settings can be accessed by clicking on these little arrows. I'm still getting used to these pills but I definitely feel it's a better experience. The GNOME file manager jumps to version 43.2 and gets subtle improvements throughout. Firstly, this updated version is now powered by GTK4 and libadweta. This is a complete generational jump from the last version. This version brings a premium polish everywhere. The icons here are now nicely padded and you can see the selections light up beautifully. Even the list view looks delicately more elegant now. The Nautilus file manager also has an adaptive design which readjusts the whole layout to be mobile friendly. The sidebar hides and can be invoked if needed. This is in tune with the upcoming GNOME shell for mobile. We also get a new properties window. Items with custom properties get emblem to let the user subtly know about them. All in all, the new file manager is sleeker and looks more refined than ever before. Epiphany Web Browser, popularly known as GNOME Web, gets upgraded and becomes a stronger option. It now gets web extension support as well as a better web app integration with the system. GNOME Web is a minimal web browser with no nonsense. It's your window to the web without any additional features. It's simple and fun to use. Now you can install Firefox web extensions on GNOME Web. While you cannot directly install them from Firefox extension store, you can download them and install them manually. This can be great if you want things like Privacy Badger or HTTPS everywhere. Now you can also install web apps with GNOME Web. This is a fantastic option as I'm a huge fan of web apps and use them all the time. These web apps behave as applications on their own and nicely integrate with the system menu and notifications. And you can also let them run in the background. This option in particular is an absolute gem as I find it necessary to keep some websites on as I need to get back to them quickly. Now I can just do this. Web apps also bring about a nice organization to your workflow and they are definitely much quicker to launch and work with. So the new GNOME web is heading in the right direction. And GNOME is also supposedly working on bringing progressive web apps to the software store which will bring a huge number of applications to Linux. The Calendar app 2 gets a refreshed new look. Calendar is now updated with GTK4 and comes with a sweet sidebar that has a date picker and the day's agenda. The right layout lets you switch between the monthly view and weekly view and the latter view works great with this sidebar. You can jump to any week just by clicking on a date in this mini calendar and you'll be able to quickly view and edit the entire week schedule all while getting the selected day's tasks right here. For a desktop calendar, GNOME calendar has become extra usable. Quick reminder, you can connect your Google Calendar and other calendar accounts with this calendar app and sync all the events seamlessly. The new status menu also brings a new audio switcher. While we could already adjust the volume from this panel, we can now easily switch the audio device from here too. This will be very useful for people who use multiple Bluetooth earphones or multiple output devices like me, as we'll be able to quickly change the audio device without having to open the settings. Personally, for me, this is a huge unexpected convenience as I frequently have to change the audio devices when I'm recording, taking online classes and just listening to songs. Great update. GNOME Software Store gets a visual retouch and looks more premium. The About section here has been polished up to look nicer. There's a new section included here to display other apps by the publisher. 
This is very useful as it'll let you browse and find high quality applications. It was one of the highly requested features and it's nice to see GNOME giving the people what they want. The software sources dropdown which let you select from different software formats like Flatpak, Snap or traditional packaging has now moved from the top of the screen to just below the install button. Different formats are also color coded. This is definitely a better place as it's more relevant and highlighted now. You will be more informed about how you are installing the applications. Work has been done on improving the performance of GNOME Software's too. This is a great step as GNOME Software definitely needed this. This software store has been slow, unresponsive and has had stuttering issues previously. But with this version, it ran satisfactorily. So kudos to that. GNOME has created a new telemetry program that collects some anonymous information about your system like your default browser, your favorite applications and such. And as you can imagine, this caused quite a stir in the community. But the thing is, this telemetry program is not pre-installed in GNOME on any Linux distributions. Yep, you heard me right. You need to install the program and then run it manually if you want to send some anonymous information to help make GNOME better. So at the end of the day, turns out your privacy is safe and GNOME is not evil. But yeah, if you want to help the good folks at GNOME improve their amazing desktop, you can install GNOME Info Collect Package and run it manually from the terminal to send anonymized information that we use to make GNOME better for everybody. GNOME Desktop has a cool dark mode. What makes it even more amazing is the inclusion of dynamic wallpapers which change based on the mode. Now let me tell you, I absolutely adore these dynamic wallpapers. When I change from light to dark mode as the sun sets, I can feel the same dark ambience, fill my desktop as it sets the desktop background to something that's more relaxing to the eye, and back to bright and playful colors with the next sunrise. GNOME 43 brings more of these fantastic dynamic wallpapers and they are all really gorgeous. I've stopped downloading and installing additional wallpapers since these came to GNOME and I'm happy to see more of these. The default wallpaper especially is really good. GNOME 43 brings a new device security report feature which analyzes various settings and security features of our system and gives us a general view of the security status of our system. Here the highest level is 3 and the lowest is 0. If you click on any of these pods, you will get in-depth information about things which are being analyzed and what security features you have or don't have. While this is a great step in bringing about a security awareness and transparency feature to Linux users, it can cause many users to panic and even try to fiddle with things to up their security level, which might cause serious problems. And that's the reason many distributions might not even ship this feature. Ubuntu 22.10 will come with GNOME 43, but it will not have this feature enabled by default. While I do think this is a great starting point for a more secure computing practice, I definitely feel in the current state, this feature will cause panic to a lot of users. So I think this screen needs to be reworked and the security statuses need to be represented in a better way as to not cause panic but provide information. Great idea but the presentation needs a bit work. GNOME 43 also upgrades many core applications to GTK4. As we saw earlier, many of these apps here like the File Manager, Calendar are now powered by GTK4 and LibAdvaita. This brings about a polished look and feel to these apps. They definitely look more premium now. On the other hand, the performance of these apps also gets a boost. GTK4 brings a completely new rendering engine called NGL Renderer which boosts app performance and frames per second and it's also very efficient with power and CPU usage. So these newer GTK4 apps will be more responsive. Using the files and calendar apps, you'll definitely feel this. There you have it. 10 new things that GNOME 43 is bringing to you and it's a new experience of using your computer. I'm really glad to see many polishing touches and improvements throughout this version. GNOME 43 is shaping up to be a great update and I'm sure it'll be an enjoyable one. You'll be able to experience GNOME 43 in the upcoming Ubuntu 22.10 which will be released in the coming fortnight, so that's exciting. Next up, check out my video of 15 amazing Flatpak apps that you definitely need to have installed. Alright, if you enjoyed this video, if you found it useful, definitely consider subscribing to the channel. I thank Mitchell Valentino and Pieter Verho for supporting my work on Patreon. My course Linux Mastery will be soon available on my Patreon as a weekly live coaching session to all my patrons. So if you are interested in it, go ahead and check it out. You can also sign up for a free demo session with me using the link in the description below. This is the next X. See you in the next one.